Thank All right. All comes up, John. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right, gentlemen. Uh, we'll call the <laughs> annual meeting and budget hearing to order. And the first thing I'd like to do is uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And uh, now we have some introductions. Or not? Well, introductions of each of you. All right. right. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not. You're, you're, the, you're the entity here that needs to All right. be known. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, well, I'm Keith Anderson. I'm Shar Glenna. Dale Johnson. Joe Beercamp. Steve Osterow. All right, and we're all present as members of the board. Uh, the annual meeting parameters, election of a chairperson. Well, the parameters are that this is a public meeting. Anyone that is a, a person that can vote in an Amory school board election, if you will, can contribute within the meeting. It's the annual meeting. It's not just these individuals. So if you want to vote yes or no for something, you have the ability <coughs> to do that if, in fact, you live in Amory. That, those are the parameters. We obviously need to have decorum about how we take such votes, but you have the ability to do so. Those uh, are the parameters. There we are, and we need an uh, election of a chairperson. We have a nomination for a chairperson. And, and anyone in the room can elect a chairperson. Yeah. Well, I'll nominate Keith as our chairperson. Okay. Are there other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? my three. Okay, yeah. then I would move to close nomination and cast unanimous ballot for Keith Anderson to be our chairperson. Is there a second? Second. And Dale, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, I'm the chairperson. It, when Thanks. You, yep. Uh, one thing with parameters, if you in the audience vote, or not vote, but make a motion or make a second, please state your name with that so that we can record that in the minutes of the meeting. So if you would so do that, all right. Uh, next we'll go to our district financial overview and Joe, our treasurer, will read his report. For the 2023-2024 budget hearing. As you are aware, the 2023 2024 district budget will change before it is finalized. Certification of our equalized valuation versus the estimate and the third Friday student enrollment count will affect our revenue plan and therefore change the budget proposed here. The 2023 through 2024 school district of Amory Fund 10 operating budget will total 22,587,000 compared to the 2022 through 2023 unaudited expenditures of 22,835,738. This is a budget decrease of 247,767 or a 1.1% decre decrease. The levy or the property tax for evaluation of Fund 10 for the 2023 22 through 2023 was 10,776,902. The 2023 through 2024 property tax levy for operations will be approximately 11,636,561. This is an increase of 867,659. The increase in the levy is a direct result of the referendum debt having been issued. Non-referendum debt levy will, will be uh, 900, no, sorry, 99,731. This is substantially lower than the 2022 through 2023 levy of 231,462. It is anticipated that state aid to the school district for the 2023 through 2024 will decrease by 1,360,661 or 14.97% from the 2022 through 2023 fiscal year. 
This year, an estimated equalized value valuation of all property located within the school district of Amory is one billion six hundred twenty-four million seven hundred ninety-nine thousand one hundred and ten dollars. This represents an increase of approximately sixteen point four nine percent from last year. Based on these statements, the generated mill rate will be seven point one six compared to. 7.72 last year, a decrease of 56 cents. Based on these projections, the school portion taxes on $100,000 property will decrease by approximately $56. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> now we'll have a fun 73 report. <coughs> so we jumped ahead a, a, a couple steps off the agenda there, um, but that's totally acceptable and fine. Um, so the treasurer's report that you see in front of you right here, uh, I do want to make sure that, that it's understood. The 2022-2023 information there is currently unaudited as we are still in the process of audit. So when we start, start talking specifically about Fund 73, which is at the bottom of that page, that's in relationship to our employee benefit trust. Uh, and if you look there for the year of 2022-2023, we added an additional $411,200. Therefore, our fund balance is currently sitting at $682,844. That information is obtained in a very fun thing called an actuarial study. Uh, and so that is uh, what they are saying that we need to satisfy our fund withdrawals for the year. Revenues and expenditures. So the next series of slides, uh, well, not series of slides, but the next slide, or also page seven in your annual meeting book, if you're following along, is just a brief overview, again, on audited information of our general fund or fund 10 operating revenue sources and expenditures. Uh, as you can see, we're about 51% state and federally funded. We are about 42% funded by property taxes, and we're 6.62% funded from other venues. Other venues being various grants and other things that are applied by different department heads or the school district through uh, different means. With expenditures for 2022-2023, you can see that our largest expense is uh, the investment that we make in our employees and our teachers. Uh, which equates to about 49% of our total expenditures for the year. Employee benefits, 24.13%. Purchase services are 17.64%. General supplies, 5.77%. Insurance, 1.73%. Capital purchases, 1.42%. And capital leases, 0.3%. And that covers that. So you did the presentation, that was what Joe's reading was, or presentation, and Joe. then that's what Joe did. So we jumped ahead a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if there's anything that you wanted to present, now would be the time. I just want to kind of give just a, a little bit of a, an overview of how to read this. Again, uh, like Sean said during our uh, uh, listening session, um, was uh it is complicated, it is confusing to read. Um, so the first yellow highlight there is general fund. That's where we live with 90% of our budget. And that is from everything from teacher salary to curriculum purchases to pencils, uh, et cetera. So that's the first one there and that is also the lion's share of where our money comes in and where our money leaves us. So if you are to pay attention to anything, it's actually on page 10 is gonna give, or I'm sorry, at the bottom of page nine, where it says total expenditures and other financing uses, that's where you're gonna st start seeing the big totals. And if you move halfway up the page to total revenues, that's what we're fighting it against. And if you are curious, the big reason why there's a discrepancy there is just because uh, the interfund transfers, that's where we take that money from fund 10 and move it over to fund 27. So this calculation or the budget adoption format here counts it as an expense to fund 10 
when in reality it's just a reduction in our revenue. So then on page 10, there's special project funds. Again, these are all fund, these are all uh, groups that live outside of fund 10 and they can be anywhere from, like I said before, FFA, it could be IPO, uh, it could be the boys basketball team, booster club, not booster clubs, but uh, all sorts of various things that are not particularly funded by Fund 10. Below that is special education. Special education is unique in that, again, there's really not a state general aid payment that's made directly to special education. It's all made through Fund 10. If we keep going on, it's a little bit more detail as far as our debt service or our Fund 38 or Fund 39, which is 38 being our non-referendum debt and Fund 39 being our <coughs> referendum, approved, referendum approved debt. And then we have our Capital Projects Fund, which of those, Fund 46 and Fund 49 are the two that we utilize. And then we have our food service fund and our community service fund. So that's where the general operating budget for 23-24 is. That last page where it says woofer fund accounting descriptions, again, I apologize that I, I didn't clarify this during the last, uh, during the se previous session. Uh, this is just really helpful generally speaking. Um, this is kind of woofer or Wisconsin Uniform Financial Accounting Requirements. This is what the state mandates that we do um, and it, it can be quite complex. So then the hearing was done, so then you move on to the resolutions. All right. We have resolutions again. Uh, I'll read the resolution. Uh, any of you present and <coughs> members of the school district may, may uh, vote or make motions <coughs> on that or vote or second it. So we'll go to state law requires the following resolution be acted upon each year at the annual school district meeting, giving the Board of Education the necessary legal authority to operate the schools. Resolution A, approval of the proposed 2023-2024 tax levy. The resolution states, be it resolved that there shall be levied upon the taxable property of the school district of Amy the tentative sum of 11636561 for the purpose of defraying the operation and maintenance of the public schools for the 2023-2024 school year. The projected mill rate shall be 7.16. Do I have a motion? Motion, Josh Gould. Josh. Do I have a second? And I have motion and second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion, that resolution is carried. School board salaries. <coughs> the resolution states, be it resolved by the electors of the school district of Amory that the yearly salary for the members of the Amory's Board of Education be $3,000. And the district is authorized to reimburse members of the Amory Board of Education for actual and necessary expenses when traveling in the performance of duties. Do I have a motion to that? Do I have a second? Is there any other discussion on that? I should have said it on the first one. I apologize. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of Resolution B, school board salaries, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. We'll go to resolution C, accident insurance for students. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the School District of Amory may provide for the accident insur insurance covering students in the district and that the cost and expenditures for said insurance is hereby authorized. It's under section 40.30, paragraph 19 of the Wisconsin statutes. Is so so move, Tom Benson. Tom. Motion. Is there a second? Second, Star Glenna. Star. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That's carried. Resolution D, the 2024-2025 annual meeting date. 
Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the School District of Amory be authorized to hold the 2024-2025 annual school district meeting on Monday, September 16th, 2024. This is under section 120.08, subparagraph one of the Wisconsin statutes. Is there a motion for that date? So moved, Star Glenn. Star, in a second. Steve. Steve. Is there any discussion on the date? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion is carried. So, do we have any other business that can legally come before us for this meeting? Move to adjourn. Char moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Fail. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, we've adjourned. I right, thank you.